Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about IPsec and IPsec it stands for Internet Protocol Security. Now this IPsec is a protocol suite that is used to authenticate and encrypt the packets which are being exchanged between two points. For example, in our case, let's say this is router 1, one point and this router 2, this is the second point. Now if you want to send some data in between these two points securely, then we can use IPsec. And we also discussed in our previous video that VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, that VPN is actually a private connection over a public network. So what happens here? This private connection will be established using public network like internet and that, that private network will provide us a facility to send our information securely from one point to another. Now, this tunnel or this virtual connection can be created using layer 1 or at layer 1 or la sorry layer 2 or layer 3 and when we create this virtual tunnel at layer 3 we use IPsec. Now IPsec actually provides us integrity for our message. So integrity indicates that the receipt the received message is actually the same message which was sent from the transmitting end. So it means the contents of the message have not been has not been changed. And to achieve this integrity, we can use this algorithm like MD5 or SHA. And IPsec also provides us authentication. And authentication refers to verifying the identity of the network entities like user or devices. So we want to authenticate that the sender is really the one from where we were expecting. So like the answer to question that who, who, who you are. So they prove the identity and for that we can use maybe PSK, pre-shared key or RSA algorithm to authenticate the users. IPsec also provides confidentiality and confidentially actually refers to uh, hiding the information. So we want to send our information hidden so that no unauthorized user can access to our information or can read our information. And for confidentiality, we use different encryption algorithm like DES, triple DES, AES or SEAL. And this IPsec also provides key management. So for the secure communication or encryption or for different things, we need keys at both the transmitting and the receiving end. And that key management is done by, by, uh, by some specific protocol we'll discuss on the next slide. So key management is to agree on a key used for authentication and for other purpose and this could be done by manual or that could be automatic. So these are the different things provided by IPsec and now let's say that uh, now to achieve the goal of creating a secure tunnel these two pairs for example in our case router 1 and router 2 they need to negotiate all the required parameters to provide us the confidentiality, integrity, authentication and secure key exchange. So for that this IPsec uses uh, the following protocol to achieve these all things. It uses authentication header and this authentication header is actually an encapsulation. We'll discuss uh, in detail in our uh, next video, but it actually provides authentication and integrity for our messages being sent between these two points. And then it also, it can also use encapsulation security protocol ESP and so ESP uh, provides authentication, integrity and additional thing is the confidentiality which is provided by ESP but AHR authentication header does not provide this one. So confidentiality is the additional thing. Authentication, integrity are same and confidentiality is provided by encapsulation security protocol. So both of them are encapsulation protocol. So at one time we will be using maybe AH or ESP so uh, and maybe sometimes we can combine them as well so these are two encapsulation protocol which are, are defined in this IPsec framework now 
And the third thing is Internet Key Exchange. So Internet Key Exchange is a key management protocol. And that protocol is used to negotiate the security association, security association between these two points. So these, for example, in this case, these two routers, they want to communicate with each other. So these are our peers are, and they will exchange this security association using I Internet Key Exchange Protocol. Now, security associations are basically security policies for, commu for communication between pair. So this will be communication. I have made a mistake maybe in, in the spelling. So it's your U and I. This for communication between pairs. Security policy policy for communication between these two routers is known as security association. So this security association will be negotiated using IKE or IAC. Now IAC itself performs its job uh, using ICCAM framework and in that it uses two phases and ICCAM actually stands for Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol which I have written here in the down you can see here. So IAC itself uses ICCAM framework and uh, to negotiate the security association IAC uses two phases or uh, IAC uh, comprises of two phases and in the first phase uh, this IAC uh, uses this first phase to negotiate ICCM policy and by, for ICCM policy it exchanges five parameters and they are referred to as Hegel so H-A-G-L-E so specifically Hegel means they will be exchanging five parameters like we can see H is the hash value so they'll agree on a common hash value between these two points and then authentication authentication mechanism they also need to agree on a common authentication method and then group diffie hellman group four and uh, then also the lifetime of the connection that how much time this uh, channel will be active or the connection will be active and then also they decide about the encryption so they need to have these uh, common things in between these two nodes for uh, creating a secure tunnel so after this phase pairs authenticate each other and they calculate a shared secret key by exchanging of these five parameters known as um, no uh, actually they are referred to as Hagel H-A-G-L-E uh, and then uh, by this exchange actually pairs negotiate security associations and after this uh, negotiation actually they they actually define or they agree on a common policy set we call it IAC policy set or internet key exchange policy set and uh, this phase actually after this gives a tunnel so phase one gives a secure tunnel that tunnel will be used for the second IAC phase so they will have a tunnel like this one and now once we have this tunnel we can move to the next phase or the second phase of IAC. And yes, one point um, uh, worth to mention here is that that this phase one can be configured to run in two modes. One mode is known as man mode and second mode is known as aggressive mode. So the difference is that in the man mode, the identity of these pairs is protected by using some encryption but in aggressive mode the identity of pair is not guaranteed to be protected so in these two modes the phase one is run now if you see this uh, we will do this uh, exercise in, in the packet tracer as well but let's say what they are exchanged in the first phase just i have given i have shown you a simple snapshot here so for, for this for ICAM and policy we give some priority value here and then you can see these all five values which I mentioned there H A G L E they are configured both at this router maybe RAR1 and this also need to be configured at router2 as well so by, by using these common um, parameters in phase one they will establish a secure tunnel okay so this is phase one and now let's move to phase two 
and in this phase two this in, in phase two of i got internet key exchange this is used to negotiate ip security parameters so now we have this tunnel from phase one we already have this tunnel and now this tunnel is actually is defined it has defined some icm policy we can call them icm policy and once this tunnel is there now in phase two they negotiate ip security parameters so in those ip security parameters they can for example decide about the encapsulation protocol like ah or esp and we'll discuss about AH and ESP in our next video. Otherwise, the video will be long. And then they also discuss uh, decide about encryption as well as hashing and the tunnel mode, whether they want to use transport mode or the tunnel mode. And so both of the nodes, they need to agree or they need to negotiate these protocols as well as algorithm. And then once they are done with that, we will have a common IPsec transform set between these two points, between two these pairs, like in our case, between these two routers. Now, within that, uh, the tunnel which was created in first phase, in the second phase, we have IPsec policy, which has been exchanged using the previous tunnel, which was given in phase one. So now we have this IPsec policy. And now this IPsec policy will be used for our for for sending our data securely it means two phase first phase was created to decide the ipsec policy and once the ipsec policy is uh, there once the ipsec policy is created that ipsec policy will be used to securely transmit our data and now we can exchange our data and then this depends upon the lifetime of this connection and then we can terminate these connections. So these were the two phases of IKE Internet Key Exchange and those, these, uh, these two phases, after these two phases, both of the endpoints, they have the required parameters to securely transmit and receive the information using the public infrastructure or the Internet. Now, if we see the same thing, maybe in the packet tracer, we'll see in the details, but let's see the simple. And now we can see that here we have crypto IPsec, some transform set. In the second set, we are going to set this transform set. And now in the transform set, you can see that what, what options we have. So by using this question mark, I have shown that we have these different options there. We can select maybe AH authentication header or ESP encapsulation security payload or protocol and within that we can use different encryption or hash algorithm so this will be our second phase so after this second phase we will we can securely exchange the information between these two endpoints so this is the end for this video on this IPsec as well as IAC internet key exchange hopefully some uh, some things will was a bit helpful for you and of course we could not discuss this ah the authentication header and esp encapsulation security payload or protocol in details so we'll discuss this in our next video until then thank you thank you very much for your time